today we're going to do a super easy mixing technique called sidechain reverb and sidechain delay and it's really useful when you want to add time-based effects on your track and not have to worry about it being washed out um, because you're utilizing a compressor to stomp down on the effect um, but right now we're working with a vocal sample by Dylan Matthew from Splice I downloaded it sounds super good it's dry uh, let's go ahead and give it a listen real quick I'm broken when you're not around unspoken words I'm screaming out can you hear me can you hear me now now so it's gonna be especially useful when these parts that he's not singing that's when the effect is really gonna start shining through and it's not just meant for vocals it can be used for guitars and pianos and synths etc but in this case we're gonna try it with the vocals we're gonna make it sound super sexy okay so I'm using Logic Pro 10 it works in any DAW the techniques are the same uh, okay so let's go to our sends and let's find a bus um, okay so I already have it labeled bus 1 as reverb and I can I can already see that I have a EQ strip activated here everything under 600 Hertz is gonna get filtered out but I'm actually gonna also add 7000 as well that way if it were a, a, a full mix we're not gonna allow the reverb to muddy up any any of the uh, any of the track so let's make sure that our volume on our bus is at unity so I'm gonna hold down option and click okay so next after the reverb on our on our reverb track we're going to find our favorite reverb I'm just gonna use chroma verb for this for this video you can use anything you want uh, let's find ambiance and vocal ambiance and let's go to two seconds okay and you can see 0% dry 100% wet perfect all right so then after the reverb is the compressor so when I play the track the compressor is gonna immediately start working and when the needle starts to move down it's going to duck the reverb it's going to duck the reverb signal it's going to it's going to stomp down on that on that reverb or whatever effect that you have so i'm actually going to lower my fader all the way down and i'm going to play it and you're going to hear nothing but you're going to see the compressor working and when i start increasing my fader you you will start hearing the reverb Okay, here we go. I'm broken when you're not around. Unspoken words I'm screaming out. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? So I'm gonna play the threshold a little bit. Now. And I'm gonna drop it. I'm broken when you're not around. I'm gonna stomp down on that reverb. Words I'm screaming I'm turn my out. Gain off. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? now and you can really adjust the settings to your taste i'm going to lower the release a little bit can you hear me can you hear me now perfect now okay great all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a delay I'm gonna set it to unity gain and I'm actually gonna drop the faders as well and I'll do stereo delay I'm gonna stereo link them both and what's nice about the stereo delay is that it offers um, you the ability to cut frequencies so I'm actually gonna cut the same I'm gonna cut 600 and 7,000 okay now the compressor afterwards and again you will hear the you will hear only the reverb but not the delay I'm broken when you're not I'm around my decrease my threshold I'm screaming out. can you hear me 
Can you okay. hear me now? Start introducing the delay. Now I'm broken when you're not around. Unspoken words I'm screaming out. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yep, so you can really hear that shine through, especially when he's not singing. That's when the effect is really shining through. And in the context of, of a, a full mix, you're going to want to utilize your automations and you can really get into detail and make it sound super professional. And it's just a really easy way to uh, ensure that whatever you're trying to sidechain is still maintaining clarity. So I really hope that helped. If you haven't heard about sidechain reverb before, I hope that this was a clear and coherent tutorial. And uh, if you have any thoughts, leave, the com leave some in the comments and I will see you next time. Thanks. Gain staging is super easy in Logic Pro 10 and I'm gonna show you two methods right now. What is going on? It's Mythical back again for another super easy Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Welcome! If this is your first time and you want to learn more about Logic Pro tips and tricks, songwriting and other mixing related stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today I'm going to be talking about gain staging. What is it? All it means is the amount of volume your tracks are hitting Logic's processors. This includes the EQs, limiters, and compressors, meaning basically how loud or quiet the audio is on your channel strip. Okay, so very quickly I'm going to show you two ways to gain stage your loops and audio and VST instruments using prefader metering and the normalize gain function in Logic. They're both very easy to access and I will say it's important to keep it in the back of your mind when you're mixing and arranging that you make sure all of your levels are set and you're not clipping. It's very easy to get sidetracked and you definitely don't want to be adding any digital distortion into your mix, especially when you work so hard on a song, you don't want the final product to be destroyed by some random track clipping. First thing that we're gonna end up doing is looking at our pre-fader metering. And basically all that means, pre-fader metering monitors signal before any fader movement. And this is signal coming from your VST and going through any subsequent plugin that you have on your instrument track. And the volume and the metering on pre-fader metering as I drop down the volume, the input signal doesn't change in relation to my volume changes on my fader. However, if I change it back to the default mode, the post fader, there's no volume and there's no metering, okay? So why is this important? Well, I'll show you why as soon as I show you how to actually access this. So on your control bar, we go to customize control bar and display and you'll see pre-fader metering checkbox. We just make sure that's checked and you'll see it highlighted up here in this aqua blue green color. And then we should be good to go. So why is this important? So if you have a VST instrument that happens to be too hot or you have some plugin that you're having maybe too much gain, let's just say for instance, you have a gain plugin that you have way too hot for whatever reason and you weren't aware of it. Well, if you have your post fader metering on, all you're gonna do is just drop the volume and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm not clipping. Well, in reality, if you check your pre-fader, you could be actually way hotter than previously thought. So what's reflected on your post-fader and your pre-fader are actually two different things. So now that we've covered the VST side of gain staging and pre-fader metering and my thoughts on why it's important to kind of keep it in the back of your mind, we should also cover the loops and samples that we download from sites like Splice because they're all normalized and they aren't viable to use straight away without doing something about the gain. So in Logic, it makes it very easy to quickly gain stage multiple tracks at once. And all we have to do is highlight the tracks that we want to affect, go to function, drop down, normalize region gain, and 
let's just go with individual tracks, algorithm, peak, and let's just drop it down to negative 18. So negative 18 on a VU meter roughly translates to zero. So in the old analog days, this is what they used to achieve that. Now that we've gain staged our audio tracks, let's take a quick listen to see what they sound like now that they aren't completely overpowering our overall track. So let's go ahead and hit play. So as you can see, the peak metering isn't exceeding negative 18, which is exactly what we want. So this is a really good place to start and I just wanted to share this quick little tip with you guys because I think it's very important to always keep in the back of your mind never to clip any of your tracks unless absolutely meaning to do so. There definitely is a time and a place for digital distortion but overall it's not going to be pleasing to the ear unless you know what you're doing. So. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and if you didn't, hit the dislike button. Otherwise, I will see you next time.